Hello my aviation friends, today thanks to Alexandra Ruslan and Alexander we will tell you a little bit about the uh, engineering department and how thanks to them we engineers know what to do on the airplane and when and of course much more. And one more information, I would like to apologize for the sound quality but uh, for recording of the audio I'm using this small mic and uh, I was not expecting that we were going to talk um, in such a big room so again i would like to apologize i try to enhance the audio as much as i was able to and without further delay let's take a look at it um hello everybody we move a bit further now i'm sitting with lovely people from engineering fl technic engineering and they'll introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about the the work which or like scope of their work so please yeah. My name is Alexander. I am deputy CEO for engineering. And uh, engineering is a, a very wide term meaning uh, what we are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, but more details our colleagues will explain. But in general, uh, we are doing uh, things related to continuing aerosmith management and also transitions of aircraft. Mm -hmm. Deliveries, redeliveries. So we have CAM organization and TAM organization mm -hmm. in these regards. So okay. maybe more details from Ruslan side. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I am Ruslan Knesh, head of sales of FL Technics Engineering. Mm -hmm. I am responsible for all commercial parts of uh, our business, for uh, new customers, for treating the current ones, and so on. Yeah, as Alexander explained, our two main uh, topics, two main businesses are continuing worseness. This is what we are doing in, for airlines and aircraft owners. Uh, for airlines, we're doing it on subcontracting basis when we're checking and tracking uh, air worseness status of the fleet, <laughs> of the operator. So if the hangar is just, they are performing the work which CAM organization assigns to them. Mm -hmm. So we're doing it on behalf of the airlines. And as well uh, about the lessors, when the aircraft are not on the lease to any airlines, the owner is responsible for uh, continuing worseness of it. Mm -hmm. So they have to assign CAM organization yes. who will trade this. Each company need to have one. Yes. Yeah, so this is what, what, what we are doing mostly. And, mm -hmm. uh, we have okay. two, two teams and as well the second product, second business what we have is the aircraft transition. So when the aircraft goes from airline, returns back to the owner or vice versa when the mm -hmm. owner passes it to the, to the airline. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody needs to check physical aircraft conditions, aircraft records and so on. We have a very wide team with uh, engineers located here and a lot of our colleagues who are sitting in, in all the world. I see. And, yeah, working. Okay. So every every airline or every um, yeah, airline or leaser can uh, ask you to support them yes. with, uh, with uh, handing over the aircraft or getting new aircraft or whatever, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. I just want to introduce my colleague Alexandra. She's located actually in Dubai, working with Middle East uh, region, but now yeah, she attended us. I'm busy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm working more on the operational side. Mm -hmm. For Alexander Ruslan, they're working more on the strategic side. So yes, on their, what I'm doing and the, the team who we are working with, we are integrating the strategy and the plans and tactics and so on. So m mostly um, the, the area, let's say, where I'm looking for and looking after, sorry, it's our Middle East, it's our uh, Middle, um, like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, what is this? Yeah, Middle East. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's more or less the, Asia, Asia, yeah. Yeah, Asia. A little bit Europe, a little bit Africa, so around the world, mm -hmm. and wherever it happens from around the world, we also working with their lesser or airline. Okay. And um, when you travel around, you meet different type of people. You uh, meet people from aviation and it's very easy and understandable for them when they ask you, what are you doing? Okay. 
and I'm an asset transitions. Okay, asset transition all clear, better line, lesser uh, asset is going from one hand to another hand. But yeah, let's say more like asset. Asset is we we looking on asset as an aircraft, for example. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So everybody knows what is that. But the difficulty comes when you meet a random person which is outside of aviation, and you tell them, "Yo, what are you doing? I'm helping supporting an alliance or lessers with asset transitions." Mm -hmm. Oh, what is this? And, and usually for those type of people, it sounds like cosmic, something mm -hmm. you know, out of out of space. And you're trying to explain what is this, right? And then you're getting to analogy like you're renting the apartment and you're trying to give back apartment to the landlord. Then you need to make sure that everything is well renovated. You need to bring the team to who can check that everything is mm -hmm. in order and everything correct then people try and finally it's a nice you. explanation yes 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 yeah the, then people really uh, finally understand you what are you doing we're doing the same but with a big machine with the big birds but this is only which costs millions yeah, yeah so it's not some yes. flat or something you you're working with the millions of and millions and actually you know one how to say one mistake or one the thing which you which somebody could miss, miss yeah it also could cost a million so that's why yeah. you know, sometimes it's very uh, why we also like to work with uh, lesser because they really they treat their aircraft as an asset which they can sell afterwards and so on so they are not just given or taken back from the airline but they're thinking two steps forward what will happen when they will be for example selling it to anybody else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which documents may be required which physical condition of aircraft should be uh, when they're getting it back so right, they, right. they are working you know and this is as well how to say very beauty of our industry of our profession yeah many people don't understand how how uh, uh, big this department must be because you need to run through the all the papers you need to you need to physically inspect the airplane so you need to have uh, even engineers on the site you need to have a uh, people who running through the through the papers which is maybe more demanding sometimes like the inspection itself right but interestingly, you have mentioned like multiple times papers, papers, papers. And people who are not in industry, they when they look at their aircraft, they believe, okay, this is the value of the aircraft. But the actual value of the aircraft is papers. Papers, yeah. papers right. How well they maintained, how well they recorded, how well they are hyped, and so on. The better the papers, the higher value of the aircraft. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's true. And if, for example, like 30 years ago, during delivery or re-delivery process, it could be around 50 findings because you have only papers, yeah? But now with all this um, IT technologies, when you have a lot of uh, papers uh, in scanned copy, the quantity of findings could reach 1,000, you know, because yes, you yes. can engage even more. Yeah, even more. That depends. On you people. can engage more people mm -hmm. for that. You can engage. Yeah. So th th this is the same what we are doing when we are performing this <coughs> such projects on behalf of our customers. We have some team who is working remotely with the records, with electronic copy of records, mm -hmm. and we have even smaller part of the team who is working just with the physical um, records or with the physical mm -hmm. conditions of the aircraft. So this is. Now the situation change, changing dramatically comparing to what was 10 years ago. Yeah, the IT helps ago. a lot. Yeah, yeah. but you still, you still people can't imagine what what it means to have a records for one aircraft. It can be one room full of documents, yes. right? It used to be, it used to be. Now uh, we're going anyways to the digital world. Paperless. Yeah. We can, by the yes. way, go to our archive, which is here on the surface. Actually, it will be nice to add it here, yeah, 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 just to just to show. No, you can see the quantity. Yeah. yeah. For imagination, yeah, how 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 it can look. If twenty years age the craft, it could be around one hundred, even more boxes with archive documentation, and also computerized systems statuses, the statuses within computers, of course. Yeah. So of course. our main purpose is to assure that delivery conditions contained in this agreement are matched. 
mm -hmm. but to reduce uh, to zero uh, the risks when an operator will return the aircraft back. But here we've been talking only about asset transitions. Mm -hmm. So we also have a department who is taking care about Kama, ensuring that aircraft is always uh, at work. Mm -hmm. yeah? Continuous air work. Continuous yeah. air work, yeah. yeah. Because it's day to day to day. Uh, every day is uh, working. Every day is uh, statuses are analyzed, what maintenance. Uh, must be done on aircraft, not to overdo that maintenance uh, and to ensure that aircraft is safe for, for the flight. Yes, of course, yeah. It's involving then us, engineers, uh, basically you come up, request something, planning, need to plan it, and we are performers, performers of uh, your request. Camo and of course the planning. Yeah. So yeah, we need to cooperate always. Yeah. It's always about the cooperation. So today we have around 100 aircraft under our camo and um, about 20 trust uh, trust uh, customers who trust us to take care of their, mm -hmm. their camo. Okay, just for imaginations, yeah. how many people are taking care of this uh, 100 airplanes? Just, just to give people mm -hmm. imagine like the image what uh, what is the what is the number of the people it's around 50 50 yeah around 50 it's... people but we have to understand here let's say if you had a fleet of 100 aircraft in the normal airline most likely you would have less people maybe right mm -hmm. but because we have diversified approach for each customer and they have different systems and of course different methodology and a little bit of logic how you communicate with each customer because each customer is unique. Mm -hmm. We have more people than probably our line would have. Yeah. yeah, but you have you have multiple customers. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's that's the that's the reason. So you yeah. can you can split the people. They don't need to work on one project only. They can work on several projects, right? But anyway, you know, we have like more than 20 customers. It means that we have 20 agreements, 20 expositions, 20 audits per year. Yeah, at least. <laughs> at, least. at least, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's a good point. Also, CEAs uh, yeah. are coming with thousands. Yeah, of each, of each, so of each airline. Yeah. Imagine if we have like 25, let's say, audits per year, it means each audit, each second week we have. Audit from somebody, yeah. Somebody As we know, audit. some airlines have a uh, aircraft register in multiple regions. Yeah. So yeah. means so means uh, different CAAs against only from single customer yeah. can come to to inspect you. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And additional internal audits as well. Yeah. Of course. So, so it's around thirty in total. So yeah. we experts in audits. <laughs> For me personally, I can say about the products and technical asset management. Yeah, with all respect to our colleagues from the different departments, but yeah, I've been working there for more than nine years with Kamo, and I would say that it's probably the most interesting product in technical side of aviation because it covers everything. It covers mm -hmm. base maintenance components, even trainings. Yeah, it's how our people are trained. So, and uh, you, how to say, Kamo is like a management, continuous management organization. So, it means, it's, uh, means that we are managing those aircraft here, yes, yes, their yes. status and so on. So because without you, we don't know what we should do. Yeah, you know, exactly. we can we can do some stuff, but you making the plan for yeah. for or like you you request something for mm -hmm. planning. And we we have uh, how to say our strategy, uh, how to say to divide and to make the people really big experts in their narrow field. So we have, for example, only power plant specialists. Yeah, so for most everything about the engines, but very deep and narrow. We have only, how to say, people who are... Structure, for, structure, for example, yeah, another part. Avionics uh, and, and so on and so on. So, yeah, it's most, how to say, for us, it's m m most interesting side, I guess, of yeah, because every uh, standalone topic like engine or structure or other things, they are too complicated uh, for one guy and knowing everything. It's impossible. It's too complicated. So within Kama organization, 
there are different specialized engineers. And it's good to mention that each component needs to be tracked as well. Yeah? Yeah. Engine, engine, for example, is asset itself. It's a separate component which uh, you can deliver to, to different customer. So yeah. engine can be taken from one aircraft and can be loaned to the, to the other because the engines are, I don't know, in overhaul. So you're renting the engines, for example. Mm -hmm. Might, maybe people don't know this, but probably you covered also this kind of swapping, right? Yeah, anything like what is happening on the floor is supposed to come from the head first, right? I really like yes. the analogy that Kamo usually is compared to the head and then part 145 is uh, Interpreted as a hands. Yeah, yeah. 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 Muscles. muscles. You give the yeah. command and muscles are performing the, so, the order. Yeah. The muscles cannot do anything until a head allowed so. Yeah. Okay, and what is, uh, for example, message for you for young people? Mm, just a very simple message, just to come to aviation. I remember when I was graduating from uh, university, yeah, so seems that time there was maybe not so many different opportunities, yeah, because now people when they graduate and they have IT, they have uh, a lot of other things, they have finally, you know, food delivered and they can go and work on a very, how to say, flexible schedule uh, to earn the money and so on, but uh, finally, of course, you, uh, you need to think what you will do in five and ten years, definitely aviation is growing from year to year, you can see these big numbers. Uh, how aviation is growing and it means that uh, somebody needs to serve those uh, aircraft and uh, somebody needs to maintain them. That definitely aviation would require uh, people. And of course, on, maybe on the very first uh, stages of the young career, it's not so easy to reach some very huge uh, levels, but uh, it definitely in, in, in the very nearest time there will be opened really uh, a huge doors for a lot of opportunities to develop yourself either in camo or in aircraft maintenance or in different different levels so uh, and basically skillful people yes. are, will be always needed yeah always yeah, yeah. you probably know it by yourself yes yeah. yes yes yes, yes. We, we also missing missing like young young people are not that passionate anymore about yeah. uh, working with the hands you know and yes. uh uh, you guys giving opportunity to work from behind the table. I'm not saying it's a less responsible job, basically sometimes even more responsible work uh, than us because your small mistake can, can cause yeah. maybe much bigger impact than, uh, than like our, which, which would we, would we can cause. So both both sides have a uh, pros and cons of course yeah. and and we are a bit running out of the time right <laughs> you need to uh i'm keeping the this uh, lovely people from their from their jobs so if you have any questions regarding uh uh what we're talking about here you can write the questions in the comments below of course and i will add a page where they can uh uh, talk with you guys directly, I guess, and also there will be probably open positions for new candidates, yeah. right? So, okay, thank you for your time, thank you for your time, and we will move to the next department. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. This was video about engineering department. If you want to know more about FL Techniques and their departments, please take a look in the description. There will be email address and link, which will lead you directly to their web page. Uh, also, I would like to say big thanks to Alexandra, Ruslan and Alexander for their time and explanation. If you have any questions, please write them down in the comments below. Of course, I would like to again apologize for the sound quality, but I hope you enjoy the video anyway. Thank you that you watched it until the end and I will see you on next one. Bye.